In this episode, we're going to cover the new SPS governance proposal put out by Matt uh, involving the alternate solution to address bot farms as well as discuss the recent happenings with the David Jazz Extraction Farm, how that played out, and what we found out about that yesterday, and how I think they're interrelated. And at the end, I'm going to discuss how I feel all of this is going to affect me and the way uh, other folks that play the way I do. And at the end, I'm going to draw some conclusions that may surprise you. If this sounds interesting to you, please stand by. Hey all you Splinterheads, welcome back. Bronze Dragon here saying thanks for dropping by. I appreciate your time. If you like this kind of Splinterlands coverage, please consider liking and subscribing and passing this along to friends and neighbors that you know like to hear about Splinterlands news. With that said, let's get stuck in. Uh, the first topic on uh, the agenda is the SPS governance proposal. <clears throat> if you listened to the town hall uh, last night, uh, you will have heard Matt discuss it. Uh, it came out uh, earlier in the day before the town hall, and uh, I contemplated uh, doing a video before the town hall, but I wanted to hear what Matt had to say, and I wanted to hear the discussion that went on about the topic before I went ahead and made a video. So we're a couple days removed, and I've had a lot of time to think about it, and I've got some interesting ideas on the topic that a lot of people who have covered this have not really touched upon. So please stand by uh, till the end of the video, and you will uh, hear those. Let me know, as always, in the comments uh, what you think of what I'm talking about, as well as provide your own take on the situation. And as usual, I will leave links uh, to the articles I discuss and all the pages I talk about in the video in the show notes so you can check them out. Now, the first thing we're going to refer to is the actual Peak D article that uh, Yamamat put put up uh, about the governance proposal. And I'm not going to read through this whole thing, but once uh, if you haven't checked out the link, you can, as well as, like I said, Matt did uh, discuss it a little bit uh, on the town hall yesterday and answer some questions related to it. Um, and I'm not going to read through the whole thing, but I can sum it up here. Uh, another uh, proposal to fight off bots. And, uh, you know, it's in the long line of over the last two years proposals and um, uh, measures we've taken to try to fight off bots here's another one so um, what he's proposing basically is a fee to be able to play in wild and actually draw any um, any benefit from it you know like SBS or whatever play benefit uh, and that fee is going to be 2000 DEC Okay, so we're talking, you know, between $1.70 and $2 worth, depending upon the value of DEC at the particular time, and that's good for a season. So that charge will be per season. The second thing is he wants to boost uh, the amount of SPS needed to um, draw out at wherever you're playing, at whatever level you're playing. So whatever SPS you have now and whatever, like we can jump over here and compare it on my account. Uh, the brawl just got over. Okay, so uh, we can see that I have a glint boost of uh, 6.19, okay? Now, uh, and we can go over and we can look at, I have uh, just a little bit over 60,000 SPS uh, state. Now, if his proposal goes through, then I will, and I'm in champion three, okay? So, and if his proposal goes through, then I will need to double that to 120,000 SPS staked to be able to maintain my 6.19 boost or whatever it is right in the same area in champion three. Those are the two things that he wants to do, okay? So you can read through the proposal and let me know what you think. Um, and I'm going to discuss this as we go along in this video, and I'm going to tell you um, how I feel this is going to affect me and people who play like me. Now, what does that mean? Okay, so I'm a person that doesn't have a whole lot of time in the day to sit and use an hour to an hour and a half to play all my card games. So as I've discussed in the past, I use the Archmage bot. I have two accounts. I have a primary and I have a secondary account. 
um, that I've been playing for a while in Archmage. I do play my brawls with my guilds and everything manually, um, and I do enjoy that part, but I just don't have the time to sit and spend an hour and a half uh, playing matches every day. Okay, so I use Archmage. I made the change over to Wild. That's fine. I've, I've followed all the rule changes as time has gone along. So I think that if you are an Archmage or Xbot user, you fall in the same category if you only have one, two, three accounts or something like that. We're not the massive bot farms. I don't think this is what uh, this is aimed at. But as has happened in the past, we're just kind of like collateral damage uh, that, you know, that just occurs, right? So let's take a step back, okay? I want to be very clear here. I was against bots from the start. Okay. When I came into the game at the end of Untamed, um, I thought to myself, why are they allowing bots in this game? I just thought to myself, this is just the ruination of a game. But it was very clear on town halls and all the discussions that they felt that that was the way forward in the game. There was always going to be bots. And it was stated pretty much like that, okay? So as time has gone along, there's been several big um, uh, governance proposals and just major changes to the game aimed at um, or directly targeting massive bot farms and not necessarily the little guys using uh, Archmage or Xbot, right? But Extractors basically just take from the game. They don't put anything back in. They don't put anything in that's useful and helpful to the game. Um, they just take. Okay, now with that said, as time went along and Archmage came out, I thought, well, hey, if you can't beat them, join them, okay? So at that point, I went ahead and I started using Archmage on my two different accounts. I had my primary and I had my secondary, which was very low, and it just kind of used uh, extra cards I had. Now at this point, keep in mind, I'm still pumping a lot of money into the system, uh, a lot for me, okay? So I know what I've put into the game, you know, eight maybe eight or nine thousand dollars it's not a lot compared to what some people have but to me that's a significant amount of money over uh, two to three years right so anyway I joined using uh, started using the bots now with that said over the years with all the changes I've had to make several different changes you know following the rule sets and everything and I didn't have anything against it like I said I'm against and well I'm for the evolution of the game getting rid of bots Okay, but in the meanwhile, I'm taking uh, incremental hits on what I'm getting out of the game, uh, even though I've put a significant amount of money into the game, but I followed the rules. I want to also bring up a point that I've said a few times over uh, since that time period in different videos, that the feeling that they gave out in those town halls being so pro-bot um, left me with the feeling that there was definitely people on the team that were running bot farms, okay? So that's a main idea I have with this video, and it just really hit me hard when, and I'll reference a, a video from Tales from the Cryptmancer, and I'll leave the uh, link in the uh, show notes. Tales had done his blockchain investigation before even Matt announced it on the town hall. But he asked him directly on the town hall, and shout out to Matt for verifying it and being up front. Um, but I think this is a thing that he, he really couldn't run away from, okay? Uh, he had to address it, otherwise it, I think it was going to explode on him and become worse than what it has been. But that's flashing forward to my second point I want to talk about. Now I want to say here that technically... The David Jazzbot farm did nothing wrong. And in the end, he ended up giving back part or I, I don't know what percentage of the prizes he got. He ended up giving that back to the team. Okay, so I want to state right up front, technically, he did nothing wrong. And I'm not really trying to put a nail in this coffin, right? I want to hit a much bigger picture item here. Okay, so if you're not familiar, um, what came out is that there's a person on the development team that is running a botnet named the David, ja David Jazz Botnet. And basically put, um, when the chests came out that had the really nice items available and 
The numbers were off, we know, and that was just a mistake on Matt's part. But this bot farm had a massive amount of uh, glint ready to go to take advantage of the situation. Now, did he technically do anything wrong? No, but he had aforementioned uh, information about it since he was on the team, okay? And as soon as it went live, he bought lots of chests, okay, and got a huge number of prizes and extracted those. Let's be clear, he's an extractor, okay? Extracted those from the game, right? And then uh, I, my feeling is that he was a little bit overzealous, a lot bit overzealous, and got caught. Because, I mean, there may be other members of the team running botnets because at this point in time, they're still legal. Are they having to subscribe to more and more and harsher and harsher uh, restrictions? Yes. I think these are interrelated because I think that because he got greedy and he jumped in there and he got all those prizes, he brought this up into the limelight, okay? And Matt had to address it. Therefore, this is why we have this governance proposal. This is Matt meeting it head on. Um, and it's, it is partially, you know, I'll give him credit. This, this will, in my, in my mind, it will hurt me, but it will improve the game, right? Let's be clear. That's the way I feel. But he had to do this to address what was going on within his team, okay? Because I think, and here's the big picture idea, is that I think that over these years, the team has been going on and on and on about combating extractors, while there are extractors on their team that they know about and let keep going. Now, Matt, in the town hall, sorry if I'm getting heated, heated here because this really affects how I feel about the game. Matt, in the town hall, says he encourages his, uh, his R&D team to play the game. Sure, but do you encourage them by the nature of not... Uh, basically having them get rid of their bot farm, you are encouraging bot farms and extraction on your team. So the question I have is, is this the only extractor on the team? Does it make a difference? I don't know. It does to me. It heavily impacts how I feel about this game. And I've generally felt over the last, uh, since Matt took over, that he's made a, good seri a series of good changes to the game. Okay. Um, but this I can't abide by. I, I don't think you can have it both ways. Okay, let's change gears. And here's another idea I had, kind of a large uh, picture idea. Okay. Um, entertain the fact that Splinterlands is supposed to be a collectible card game, a collectible, tradable card game on the blockchain, right? And that's what it is. Um, the basis of collectible, tradable card games, Pokemon, Magic, what, what have you, um, is mostly for the fact that um, the cards are collectible. As the cards get older, a lot of times they get more valuable, okay? There's inherent valuable uh, value to them, okay? Either they're of limited numbers, which we have in Splinterlands, you know, as time goes along, the alpha and the beta, the numbers decrease, um, but we are in a situation where this governance proposal is going to send the value of older cards down in my opinion okay so follow me here okay so what we're saying is that in wild you're going to make about a quarter of what you do in modern and i understand they're trying to push people into modern i i totally get that but if you're new to the game and you're coming in, obviously they're trying to get the new players in modern and in other card games, that's the same way. But even once you've been in the game for a while, right, there's gonna be really no incentive to buy those older cards, okay? People that have been with the game for years have been holding older cards with the hope, and, and the prices did go up on them, but now they're back down. But with this governance proposal, it's going to push the price of the cards down even further, okay? So the one thing, I mean, you can all, always stake, you know, old cards on land, and there's a couple other things you can do with them. But as far as playing goes, if you get into playing, the only thing you can do is play in wild with those older cards. 
So why would I invest a lot of money, high dollar cards, uh, in high dollar cards, if I have to play them in a um, in a manner that gets me a quarter the amount of rewards that I could get, plus I have to pay a uh, every two week fee to play in that league, okay? It's just going to continue to drive those cards down, which kind of breaks the whole idea of being a collectible card game, okay? Now, I'll take that one step further, okay? Other card games like Magic the Gathering, Pokemon, etc., they all have these new leagues like Modern, okay? They're focused on newer people, um, and they're, let's be clear here, they're focused on selling the packs of the newest uh, card expansion, okay? That's fine. The company needs to make money to stay in business, right? So they have a league for new players. It's easier for them to fit in, and uh, it requires the new packs, right? Okay, so flash forward. Oh, so you get into the game, you spend a couple thousand dollars on getting a new uh, modern deck going, and then eventually, a couple years later, that deck goes into wild, and then you immediately lose a large amount of value on your deck because you can no longer play it in modern. It goes to wild, okay? So... I'm very clear. I understand why the company is doing this for business to sell card packs, right? But everyone who stays with the game over time will just continually see their value of cards go down because there's no reason for the cards to gain value once they go into wild. I don't know. Tell me if I'm wrong or if I'm right in the comments. Okay, to wrap this all up uh, and maybe make things a little bit muddier, I think where I'm at after I've thought about this a couple of days is I'm going to give the changes a good chance. I mean, I'm so deep in the game right now that I'm just not like quitting because I would have to take pennies on the dollar and I'm not doing that. Okay, so I'm going to give it a good try, a couple season try, and see actually what happens because there's so many variables here at play that just about anything could happen. You know, um, I think best case scenario is that um, obviously I'm not going to double the SPS I have staked, okay? So that's immediately going to cut in half what I bring in. However, and here's the big however, um, the removal of a lot of bots, which in theory this is going to cause from wild, will cause a rebalancing of wild, okay? So all these very low-end 50 DEC uh, per day accounts, um, are going to go away, okay, supposedly, um, and it'll cause Wild to be rebalanced. Now, whereas, you know, I've expressed my surprise due to this whole problem, my account is playing in Champion, which it really should be playing in the Gold 1 to Diamond 3 level. This is where I theorize my account to come back down to, okay? Now, what that means is that my Glint Boost will go back up. Okay. What this also means is that the wild pool will be, be bigger for those of us who stay in wild. Okay. So I think, like I said, I think ultimately, best case scenario, I come out about even. I just have to pay the 2,000 DEC per season um, to stay in it, which is really nothing for me as, as far as right now. I mean, it is something, um, but I'm not worried about that part. Now, my secondary account, on the other hand, is where the big question mark is going to be, okay? So I play an account um, that I have another guild with KGM. I'm in KGM Jam's guild. I've been liking playing along with their guild and helping out in the brawls and everything like that. I have an opinion right off the bat that I'm going to try it out, but the secondary account might have to go away. Um, and, you know, uh, that's been one of the kind of initiatives there that I, I've seen is they've been trying to get people to consolidate, right? So, I mean, not that I have a huge amount of accounts. I have three accounts. One is largely just sitting there unused because it's uh, for rentals. And then I have my secondary account, which is right in the silverish, high end silver range. And then I have my main account. I may have to tell KGM that um, I can't play anymore and my second account is going to have to go away. And that hits on another item that I thought about is that I think with the consolidation that this might cause, um, there will be less liquidity in uh, guild brawls. So you will see fewer guild brawls. 
I don't know how that's going to play out, but that was just an idea in the back of my head thinking, hey, if I'm having to do this, then probably a lot of people, uh, other people are going to have to do this as well. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Now, at the very end of this, like I said, um, I'm going to give it a try, see where we end up. And as always, I'll report on it. Uh, but as has been happening for the last three years, I'm just having to continue roll on and make changes. I'm fine with that. And like I said, ultimately, I think the ultimate goal here is to get rid of bots completely and they just have to outlaw them okay why didn't they do that to start with my opinion is they were botnets were keeping the game afloat for a while you know they paid in bought their spell books etc etc you know that's a debatable topic but i've always felt that as well so i know i've stirred the pot i know that i'm getting ready to get some fire in the comments please do it. Uh, let me know if you agree with me. Let me know if you don't and give me a, uh, give me your opinion. Um, I, I'm not purposely trying to stir this up. I'm just trying to get out my opinions on the situation going down because I, I believe in the game and I want to see it succeed. Otherwise, I wouldn't have spent all my time, effort, and money on it. But I just, uh, this, con this, what happened within the team this week it's just really hit me hard and I really need to think uh, about where I'm going from here with the game. So uh, either way, I've thanks for listening to me blab on. Uh, I hope everyone on your side is happy and healthy and you're starting off the weekend in fine form. For those of you here in the States, uh, we're heading into Memorial Day weekend. Um, just be stay safe, whatever you do, uh, and don't do anything crazy because I want to see you here on the back end uh, watching my videos on a daily basis. This has been Bronze Dragon. I'll see you on the flip side.